Hello everyone. Today we learn about the Maxwell's equations in free space isotropic medium and the physical significance of Maxwell's equation followed by the proof of the transverse nature of electromagnetic waves using the Maxwell's equations. So let's start. The physical significance of Maxwell's equation. The first equation which is the Gauss law of electrostatics signifies that the net outward flux of electric displacement vector through the surface enclosing a volume is equal to the net charge contained within the volume. The second Maxwell equation which is the Gauss law of magnetostatics indicates that the net outward flux of magnetic induction B through any closed surface is zero. The third Maxwell's equation is the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. It signifies that the electromotive force around a closed path is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the path. The last equation, which is the modified Ampere circuital law, signifies that the magnetomotive force around a closed path is equal to the conduction current plus the displacement current through any surface bounded by the path. So let's go for the Maxwell's equations in free space. We already know that the Maxwell's equations are given by dive D is rho, dive B is zero, curl H is equal to minus dou B by dou T and curl H is equal to J plus dou D by dou T. Now for free space, the volume charge density is equal to zero. The induction current is zero and mu is mu naught and epsilon is epsilon naught in free space. So the above equations, the Maxwell's equations reduce to the new form, which is dive E is zero, dive H is zero, curl E is equal to minus mu naught dou H by dou T and curl H is equal to epsilon dou E by dou T. So these are the equations of Maxwell's equations in free space. Now we have to find what are the Maxwell's equations in isotropic conducting medium. So let us consider a linear isotropic conducting media having permittivity epsilon and permeability mu. Then the conduction current J is given as sigma E. Sigma is the conductivity. In such a case, one can write D is equal to epsilon E, B is equal to mu H and rho is equal to zero since the entire charge resides on the surface of the conductor. So there is no charge inside the conductor. Maxwell's equations can be written as dive E zero, dive B zero, curl E is equal to minus dou B by dou T, curl H is equal to J plus dou D by dou T, where J is equal to sigma E. These are the equations for isotropic conducting medium. Now taking curl of equation three, which is the Maxwell's third equation, we get curl of curl E is equal to minus mu dou by dou T of curl H. We have opened up B using mu h. So this is as equation number five. Using equation four in five, which is we are substituting for curl h in this equation using the Maxwell's fourth equation. So we get curl of curl e is equal to minus mu dou by dou t of sigma e plus dou d by dou t. So we have substituted for curl h here. Now we again use the vector identity for curl of curl E, which is nothing but grad of dive E minus grad square E. So we just open up the right hand side. We get minus mu sigma dou E by dou T minus mu epsilon dou square E by dou T square. But now dive E is equal to zero from the first Maxwell equation. We substitute dive E equal to zero here and we get this equation. The similar form of equation can be obtained in terms of the H vector. So this is in terms of the H vector. So these are the electromagnetic wave equations in homogeneous isotropic conducting medium. Now using the Maxwell equation, we will see if the electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature or not. So a plane wave is one that travels in one direction and remains independent of the direction and 
its amplitude is same at any point in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation the solution of the plane wave may be given as e r t is equal to e not e to the power i k r minus omega t and b in terms of <clears throat> k and r and omega t is is equal to b not e to the power i k dot r minus omega t where k vector is the propagation vector and that is given by 2 pi by lambda n cap or omega by c n cap where e not and b not are the complex quantities and their real parts represent the actual fields n cap is the unit vector along the direction of propagation now we use the free space maxwell equations which are given as div e equal to 0 div b equal to 0 now div e we can open it up this is the divergence operator and this is the value of e we have just now read but k dot r is equal to i k x plus j k y plus k k z or is equal to this k x x plus k y y plus k z z so that is your k dot r therefore divergence of e is equal to we substitute all these values and the e components of x y z direction like this we open up the k dot r to be like this so we substitute the electric field also component wise like this and we separate out the x y z components so here we have this do by do x e not x e to the power i k x x plus k y y plus k z z minus omega t and so on for the other components so we continue opening up from the previous equation and we get i k x e 0 x plus k y e 0 y plus k z e 0 z e to the power i k x x plus k y y plus k z z minus i omega t that is what we have obtained after differentiating the previous equation and we get to the equation i k dot e so divergence of e is equal to i k e equal to 0 or k dot e is equal to 0 similarly we can also show that div of b gives us k dot b equal to 0 the above result shows that e and b vectors are perpendicular to the direction of propagation and hence electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature also curl e is equal to minus do b by do t and curl b is equal to mu not epsilon not do e by do t so we write curl e which is the equation 1 again in the form of a de determinant like this which is equated to minus do b by do t now evaluating the left hand side we get this to be equal to i k cross e now i k cross e substituted here is equal to minus do b by do t b again written in terms of b not e to the power i k dot r minus omega t and then we get this to be equal to i omega b after differentiating with respect to time so we get k cross e is equal to omega b similarly we can also show that k cross b is equal to omega mu not epsilon not e using the next equation which was the fourth maxwell equation the above equations indicate that b is perpendicular to k and e is perpendicular to k and b hence e and b are mutually perpendicular to each other and also to the direction of propagation therefore e b and k are orthogonal vectors thank you